She knows who I am. Where's the other girl? Truth be told, the announcement of David Gordon Green's legacy sequel of The Exorcist had us fans excited from the time Ellen Burstein confirmed reprising a role as Chris McNeil from the 1973 original. Of course, it was going to be a monumental impossible task to make a direct sequel to what happens to be a timeless horror iconic classic that everyone gushes over to date. And now, with the movie just having its theatrical release, the fundamental question on everyone's mind is will The Exorcist Believer reach the height of the original film? Film. Well, that is for you to decide. As for us, we will be spilling out spoilers on what happens to be the first movie of a planned new trilogy for the Exorcist franchise. Are you ready? Let's dive right into the video then. And before we go into our explanation, we do have one very small request. If you enjoy our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. What is it, baby? I can't, can't do it. Baby, I'm right here. I don't want to go to hell. The beginning. Green's Believer begins with married couple Victor and Seren enjoying themselves at their vacation in Port Au Prince in Haiti. Seren is pregnant. A young boy comes up to her and takes her inside a market to have her baby blessed. Seren is highly touched by the process and comes back to her husband telling him how she met a woman at the market who gave her a Haitian blessing and protection for their baby. Later with Victor wanting to go up the bell tower of a church to take a wide-angle shot of the whole city, a physically exhausted Seren goes back to the hotel. An earthquake follows soon after and Zeren gets severely injured in the process. Before Victor takes Zeren to the hospital, she tells her husband to protect their child at all costs. At the hospital, Victor learns from the doctors that they will only be able to save either Zeren or their unborn baby girl, and despite it being a difficult choice, Victor has to make one. We as the audience are not aware of the decision that Victor makes back then, and the story time jumps 13 years into the future. We find Victor's daughter Angela all grown up, and this just shows that Victor followed through and made his dying wife's wish come true. Angela dearly misses her mother and that is evident from her occasional habit of going through Seren's belongings. As for Victor, he is highly watchful and protective of his daughter and always does his best to be around her. Moving on with his storyline, Angela tells her father that she will be at her classmate Catherine's place post-school for homework and that Catherine's father will drop her back home. Victor tells Angela to be home by dinner and drops her to school. Angela meets up with Catherine and judging the due over their conversation, they have both clearly lied to their respective parents about their post-school plans. Both the girls are seen venturing off into the woods after school to a pre-selected spot and we learn about their plans of performing a seance by themselves. Angela wishes to speak to the spirit of her mother and no points for guessing that the seance goes terribly wrong. Angela and Catherine are discovered three days later at an unknown barn and brought immediately at the hospital. Their families are immediately informed and they arrive at the hospital to find their children completely disoriented and having lost track of time. The girls are made to go through rigorous physical examination in order to get a better idea of what went wrong while well, they went missing, but with every test surprisingly coming out clean. They are discharged from the hospital. Back home, the girls start acting strangely. Angela wets her bed the following morning, and as Victor draws up a bath for Angela, he ends attacking him with her mother's shawl, post which he suffers a violent seizure and is taken to the hospital right away. By then, Angela has already become verbally abusive, much to the shock of her father. Visible and painful marks start appearing in her body and she keeps yelling that she wants her mother. The doctors forcibly administer a sedative to calm her down. Catherine, on the other hand, starts behaving erratically in the church, so much so that she disappears from there for a brief moment, only to make a public appearance drenched in blood somehow, and continually screaming, the body and the blood, thereby interrupting the Baptist pastor's speech. Catherine's mother, who is highly religious, is certain that the girls have become demonically possessed, having brought back something with them after the seance. <laughs> Far more sinister. Later at the hospital, Nurse Anne is seen checking the vitals of Angela when the latter looks at her and calls her by the name of Sister Mary Xavier. This has Anne exceedingly shocked as this was the very name she was to take after she became a nun, but that never happened as she got pregnant before she took her vows and became committed to God. This left Anne as a novitiate nun, but these were details Anne had never shared with anybody. Therefore, with Angela being aware of such personal information about her life, which is 
is humanly just not feasible, she decides to go and have a word with Victor, and hands Victor a book of Chris McNeil, the only person alive who has had similar experiences and tells the skeptic Victor to contact her right away. Victor, who has already made up his mind to have Angela admitted to a mental institution by then, checks out a few of Chris's previous interviews and reaches out to her, hoping that she will help both the families out. Chris agrees to aid and confides in Victor that her own daughter, Reagan, went into hiding after she wrote the book and to this day she does not know where she is. Chris initially visits Angela at the mental institution and then goes to visit Catherine at the latter's home. With Chris entering Catherine's room, she finds her mocking at her and tells her that Reagan is burning in hell. With Chris commanding the demon to release Catherine, she gets stabbed in both her eyes by Catherine and is immediately taken to the hospital. Chris, in spite of losing her eyesight, encourages Victor to believe in the concept of hope, people, and connection and urges him to bring people of diverse religions, culture, and background to help execute the final exorcism. Victor goes ahead and assembles a crew consisting of Catherine's parents, Miranda and Tony, ritualistic healer Dr. Beehive, Baptist pastor Don Revens, Nurse Anne, Victor's neighbor Stuart, and a Catholic priest Father Maddox. The final exorcism is to take place at Victor's house and the group sets up the entire place before Angela and Catherine are brought here. Father Maddox reveals at the last minute that he will not be able to be a part of the exorcism as the church is not allowing him to do so and passes leadership to Anne, handing her the Bible and cross and telling her that he has full faith in her. The Final Exorcism Everyone is handed a Gris Gris for protection by Dr. Beehive and specifically told not to touch the girls after the exorcism begins. Well, it is only fitting to state that the initial attempts made by Anne to have the demon free the children of infestation are ineffective. Anne is mocked and verbally abused by the demon specifically for her past and even spat on with what seems to be some kind of green vomit. What's worse is that the heartbeats of the girls are now beating in sync. Soon, cross marks start appearing on the foreheads of Angela and Catherine and it is only after Dr. Beehive's intervention that the night tends to turn around even if it is for a brief moment. Father Maddox, who has been outside the whole time praying inside his car, finally steps inside Victor's house and joins the rest. While his prayers initially seem to be working and everybody present there starts praying together, the demon ends up turning Father Maddox's head 360 degrees around, instantly killing him to everyone's utter horror. Things are finally led to a point when a big revelation is revealed. The demon ends up revealing to everyone that Victor Victor had initially chosen to save his wife instead of Angela when the doctors told him to make a decision. Somehow, Seren never made it alive, but Angela miraculously did. In the present, the demon tells Victor that he has another choice to make and that only one girl amongst the duo will get to survive. Victor remembers his wife's last words of always protecting her daughter, and he yells at the demon telling that he will not choose. Miranda agrees with Victor and says that she will not be making that choice either. However, Tony, in a state of panic, speaks out loudly that he chooses chooses his daughter Catherine to live. This has Angela lifted up in the air and vomiting copious levels of dark blood all over the ceiling post and she falls dead on the ground. Catherine, on the other hand, wakes up from her trance-like state and starts behaving and talking normally. Well, it does look like the demon has accepted Tony's choice and Victor is seen hugging Angela's lifeless body, but here's where the twist comes and we get a good glance at the devious nature of the demon. Angela inexplicably starts breathing and as for Catherine, she goes into a state of cardiac arrest. Even with numerous attempts made to have her heart back up to beating using a defibrillator, it does not work and Catherine ends up dying. If one takes a closer look, the decision made by Tony actually mirrors the decision Victor had made in the past. The one opted to live dies. Catherine, post getting deceitfully cheated into being the sacrifice, is shown getting dragged into hell. He finds herself at the same seance spot and gets pulled under the water by several hands. As for Angela, she's seen resuming school after the exorcism and looking at the empty seat of Catherine the classroom. Anne's voiceover echoes throughout. I think we are born into this world with hopes and dreams and the desire to be happy, and the devil has one wish. Make us give up. The movie ends with Victor visiting his wife's grave and Chris getting reunited with her daughter, Reagan, who ends up paying her mother a visit at the hospital.
the future of the franchise. Of course, it is not made clear whether this particular movie happens to be the last in the franchise to show of Catherine. We know she is in hell and maybe the sequel, which is already titled as The Exorcist Deceiver, can somehow include this, especially her experience in hell as part of the main storyline. Moving on, also the fact that Reagan's character is alive and hearty is an indication that we get to see more of her storyline in Deceiver, making her actively a part of the new story. We know these are theories, but we are already excited about Deceiver, which is scheduled for an April 2025 release. I believe you can help get our girls back. Exorcism is a ritual. Every culture, every religion, they all use Marvel's it. Verdict. We'd like to urge every fan of the Exorcist franchise to give the newest entry that has just released a definite watch. If you ask us, we think Believer is clunky, but having said that, it is still worth a watch. So, why don't you see it for yourself and tell us your thoughts in the comments section below. Please know that we're totally up for discussion. Well, that is all for today, and with this, we've finally come to the end of our video here. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do leave a thumbs up and also stay tuned with us as we promise to come back with more exciting content. Till then, Goodbye and thanks for watching. Have a nice one. Don't be scared. We've met before. Mother.